Okay, so let's talk about the Kemper. Let's talk about um, you using the Kemper. And uh, shameless plug, if people are looking for a Kemper, they can get the Tone Junkie loaded Kemper at British Audio. There's also an Embrit loaded Kemper. And uh, I'm saying it's the best deal in the Kemperverse mm. because it's it's a lot of free profiles and it's the same price as a normal Kemper. The profiles Amazing. are just thrown in for nothing. Yeah. So, um, but let's talk about let's talk about you using the Kemper. Yeah. Because um, you've been using the Kemper on the road. That's how we. Yeah. That's how we got hooked up was mm. uh, uh, via Instagram and via uh, our mutual friend uh, Chris. Yeah. And when I started seeing you were using the Kemper. And um, how'd that start? What was the first time you used a Kemper? Um, it was maybe three years ago. Um, we were... Um, I can't remember exactly what we were about to do. Mm-hmm. But it was with Michael W. Smith. And um, the, uh, the, the... The sound engineer approached me and said have you seen these things called the camper profile and I was like no I've heard about them I haven't tried them he said uh, he said would you be open to trying one and uh, you know we could come over to the studio we'll rent one for a day or something and come over and like profile your amp or something and mm-hmm. and, and s- s- just see what you feel he said you know we we run a, we, we go into a lot of venues where space is really an issue, where stage volume is really an issue. Would you consider like giving it a try? I'm like, of course, you know, I'm not saying I'll definitely use it or anything, but yeah. So um, he came over to the studio about three years ago, and uh, um, and we we kind of plugged it up in in my room and. Uh, and played a few of the profiles that were on there, you know, and and it it, it really surprised me how how it made me feel, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it still had the sort of brightness and depth that that you kind of expect when you hear an amp, and didn't necessarily sound like a a, a pod. Sure. Even though I hadn't spent much time with pods or anything at the time, you know. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Just sounded so much more generic, or right. like like. Like a DI guitar, you know. Yeah. So, um, uh, so then when we ended up profiling, we, we profiled three of my amps that day, um, and you got to bear in mind that I had no idea what I was doing, yeah. you know. But when it comes to the refine mode, or you know, when you can A B, you mm-hmm. know, your amp and that, I couldn't believe yeah. how the same it was. It's amazing technology, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And so, um, uh, so over the over that next year, we used them a lot. Um, yeah. And I used them when I say them because I used two mm-hmm. because um, you always run two amps. I, I I run two amps, and I wanted it to feel like I, it was the same sort of thing. And so um, we did, and like I loved it. Um, then. When we came into the the following year, um, uh, Delana and Third Power, we we kind of been, we built a rig together, and so I took that out on the Revolution tour, and yeah. and, and, and that year, and uh, and that's amazing, and I still love uh, using that rig too. Um, but then when we circled round to like doing a cruise, for instance, or Got flying to Nigeria and not knowing what you're going to get, right? Uh, yeah, in Lagos or or, mm-hmm. or well, not to say that's you know, I mean they've got gear out there and what have you, but you just sure, sure. you just never know what you're gonna um, what you're gonna get when you travel like yeah. that, and it brought a level of consistency and awesomeness, <laughs> <laughs> um, peace of mind even, yeah. you know, to um, to that so. Last year, um, we were going to do the Christmas tour and with um, orchestras and things like that. And so even just running like SGIs or whatever to a back room in a in a symphony hall, it, it kind of wasn't very practical. Sure. You know, so um, 
Um, so we used the cameras again, and that's when I started a post around it, and I, and I was in touch with you, and in and in touch with the guy up in at Sailor Sounds, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of saying, um, you know, asking for ideas about yeah. profiles, and I was just diving a little bit deeper into sure. it, and um, and just really kind of loving it. Yeah, I, I loved it. Because I just I thought, well, if I'm going to use this, I need to just dive into it a bit more and get exactly what I want, you mm-hmm. know. And so, and that's when you reached out and said, "Hey, should we uh, should we do something together?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm all all about it, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah. Very excited. Yeah, and and obviously, I mean, I'm really excited too about the the things that we're doing together because we've at this point we've profiled not everything mm. but a ton of stuff. Yeah, we've done the park. We've done the AC30. Yeah. We've done the the JMP and the park together. Yeah. We've done the AC30 and the park together. Yeah. We've done the what we call the Arshal. Arshal. Yeah. <laughs> it's your it's your bluesbreaker combo, and um, with the M missing. Yeah, the M fell off the M somewhere. Fell off. Yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere. It'd be great to find that M. I know. It? It's probably like sticking up out of a out yeah. of the ground somewhere. If anyone has, this is a long shot. But I'll tell you, this has worked before. If anyone has a Marshall M, I'd we should uh, you should reach out and let us know where you found it because maybe it's where Stu lost it. Because um, here's a story I haven't shared on the podcast before. Um, the Sues, you know, you know the Sues. He had an amp built for him by Joe Morgan years ago uh, when they were both in Southern California. He met Joe, and the Sues was playing. The Seuss has a weird story. He was playing in country bands when he lived in Southern California, and then he moved here and stopped playing country music, yeah. which he's the only guy I know who probably moved to Nashville and stopped playing country music, you know? But um, he had this Morgan amp, and it was serial number The Seuss. Huh. And we have, we've we started saying, just here and there, like, oh, man, we wish we had that amp and we could find it. And wouldn't you know it, somebody reached out and said, hey, I'm, I'm at my buddy's house, and I just looked in the back of his Morgan, serial number, the Sues. And they're going to bring it over and we're going to profile it. That's amazing. I know. It's like, I, can't, I couldn't believe that, that yeah. we found it, you know? Yeah. So maybe we'll find the M. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but we call it the Arshal now, yeah. which is cool. And uh, we, haven't, uh, we haven't rushed any of it, have we? You know, it's, it, no, it's we've, like we've st- taken lots of time. That's why we haven't done everything. Yeah. You know? We still got to do the JMP by itself. We've still got yeah. to get into the tremor verb, uh-huh, the tremor verb, yeah. and then and then pairing the tremor verb, which I'm excited verb. about. Actually. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Because the, uh, the that that was the sound of King of Fools and mm-hmm. Mesomorphous. So yeah, uh, that and the Arshal together. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Excited about that. So um, yeah, you know, it's uh, um, I don't know if anything will ever replace the feeling of standing. On a stadium stage in no, front of a no nothing a will. rig yeah you know yeah uh, but um, in terms of and and I, I can only really quote Michael W Smith front of house engineer who I wish I'd ca- caught this on sure uh, <laughs> on iPhone or something we should make him but, reenact it and we'll put uh, yeah you know, paid reenactment <laughs> yeah no that's right but you know he said to me he said you know whatever you're doing with those campers he said. I don't have to do anything to mm-hmm. it out front. He said, I turn it up. It is really awesome. He yeah. said, the tone is awesome. Yeah. And, uh, um, what was that? Was that your park? It's the park. The park profiles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one, one of them was the park and the other one was the, 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 the twinery. Yeah. The twinery verb. What was the other one you sent me? Supery. 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 It was that one? Yeah. The supery. Yeah. See, it's not a super reverb. Yeah. It's a super reverb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's supery. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit like so. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I don't know if I should tell this story. <laughs> oh, now you got to tell. Now I've got to tell it. So uh, I've got some very close friends, and his name is Pastor Dave. Yeah, and uh, we play golf with this uh, one of the funniest guys <laughs> that I've ever met, and I'm not going to say their proper names, but uh, but he always in in front of other people. He yeah. says it so fast, but he calls him Bastard Dave. <laughs> but <laughs> he does, and he doesn't hear it, right? <laughs> yeah, like well, the other people don't hear it. <laughs> Bastard Dave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> does Dave hear it? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, that's good. Well, that'll be, that's the challenge for the week. Uh, go try that on your pastor, right? <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about it and loving the, just diving into the campus and like all the stuff that you've, you know, I've watched your YouTube channel, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, learning about the definition yeah, and the, uh, yeah, clean sense, sure. All distortion yeah. sense, you know, yeah. like all those things that you would never know are there. You know, even yeah. the compression after the amp, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like that, yeah. that kind of stuff. All the stuff you don't know is there, and um, uh, it's just been really helpful to kind of shape some of that stuff. And uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Dave, our um, front of house engineer with Marcus W. Smith, just w- he couldn't say enough about how yeah. great that tone yeah was on on the on the last tour we did to me it's like that's the ultimate compliment i think from a from um from a sound guy yeah um and because i dialed in my tone live dialed it and dialed it just made adjustments every week playing um playing the church house stuff i just did that church house record people know about i talk about it sometimes yeah but every week just making small adjustments do i want this brighter do i want this part darker creating a rig for that to the point that that that's what our sound guy said to me one time. He's like, guitar sounds great. I don't have to do anything to it. Mm. And it's like, we as guitar players, I think sometimes get too in love with, not, I don't feel, I feel like working guitar players get it. What works is really what you should be using, right? Yeah. And and they really quickly get away from the romanticizing of vintage and, and this make and that, the, yeah. you know, hard to find. And you start to go after what works. Yes. And when, when, when stuff works, whether it's expensive or cheap, whether it's new or vintage, it works. So you use it. I feel like the working guys get that. Yeah. It's sort of everybody else, like myself, who spends too much time on the internet, right? <laughs> More time researching and watching videos than actually playing the guitar, right? We get so caught up in, well, does it sound authentic? Mm. Does it sound just like the, mm. the, you know, a 67 twin? Does it yeah. sound just like the JMP, you know? Yeah. Does it sound just like this? And I always think sometimes that's not the most useful question because, you know, Hendrix had a trick where he played a Strat into a Plexi and he turned everything on 10 because he wanted more, the most sustain, the most gain, that's how you get it. But it was too bright. Mm. So he used a 50-foot cord. Yeah. And he liked he liked the high-end roll-off yeah. of using a 50-foot guitar. Well, that's yeah. too long. Of yeah. course you lose high-end. Yeah. But he had enough high-end that he, you know. So that that's the, the Hendrix trick of losing yeah. high-end. We would say, though, that's not correct. We would yeah. say well, he's got to have a true bypass pedal and he's got to. Yeah. And that's the type of thing where I think the Kemper for me is such a useful tool where it's like, it's got me asking the question, does this sound exactly like an amp? Who cares? Yeah. It, it sounds like the amp, but it sounds like the amp with the mics. With It sounds yeah. like that signal chain. Yes. And when you go from, I'm going after the sound of an amp to I'm going after the signal chain, you're filling in all those variables that used to be open to you. I always talk about, I used to drag in my really expensive boutique amp and my really expensive pedals and I'd show up somewhere and they'd give me an SM57. And that'd be it. That's my sound. And it's like, but with the Kemper, with the Helix, with all these other things, you can you actually get a level of consistency where you can get the sound of a ribbon mic through an API mm. with a 57. And you can get those two mics where you want them. And you can be sure now as a guitar player that from your fingers to, to at least the sound desk, maybe we could say to their ear, you and I have much control over what mm. is being delivered and what you're hearing rather than stopping your control at the amp. Yeah. And now it's up to somebody else or it's up to the venue to do the mic, the preamp, yeah. the EQ at the board. Yes. I think that's, that, that is absolutely true and brilliant. Uh, and then some, then the mystery comes in, which is that we could play the same rig on the camper <laughs> and sound totally different. Well, that's true, of course. You know? <laughs> that's really true. So, so I love the I love the detail mm-hmm. and the chasing it down. Yeah. And the you know this is going to sound amazing, um, but then it's it's almost like you know sometimes we're worried about sharing our secrets, but there's no there's no need to worry because 
like someone else picks up that thing, it's going to sound different. Right. You know? Totally. I'll never forget. Um, I used to love Thin Lizzy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, growing up, loved Thin Lizzy, the band Thin Lizzy. And, and one day in Chandler Guitars, um, Doug Chandler said to me, he said, oh, have you met Scott? And um, I've now lost his last name, but Scott from Thin Lizzy, right? Yeah, yeah. He was down in the basement, like, with his rig, and they were helping him, like, dial some things in and what have you. And I was like, no. And uh, so um, he took me down there. And one of the nicest people, uh, you know, that, that I'd met and really long hair. I mean, he's Thin Lizzy, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Scott Gorham, I think his name is, right? And, uh, you know, Les Paul and rig, massive rig there. Right, right. And he's like, yeah, I'll try it out. And I was like, playing Scott from Thin Lizzy's rig yeah, in the basement, yeah. you know. Sounded like me, but right. on his rig, right? right? right but right. Um, it was just awesome. Yeah. So, I, actually, that's another thing that I've, uh, I try and put into practice is that I've met so many amazing people that have not that, that have treated me with such respect as a nobody like when I was a nobody yeah you know and people have given me their time their advice their kind of uh, kindness and um, and so people like him and Phil Kagi back in the day yeah and like all, all these different people that just spend time chatting about stuff with you and yeah uh, you know, you don't get the sense that they're entitled at all, yeah. you know. Um, I find everybody famous I meet is just a gearhead really at yeah. heart, you know. Yeah. They're so into their gear. They talk, Guitar players, you know. Yeah. They just, they love talking about gear. Mm. And uh, and they're into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, you're playing, uh, so Christmas tour, you yeah. were using, you're, you're always combining two amps. Yes. That's part of your sound. Yeah, and it has been for a while, you mm-hmm. know, like, um, and since the sort of uh, since I got into the even tide stuff, uh, so huge shout out to the H nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was into the stomp boxes before, so like the time factor and what yeah. have you, you know. And uh, um, I was always using two amps uh, because I like the combination of the the sound. Um, I wasn't thinking about stereo, but then if you you know, if you like put a wide delay or, you know, have the chorusing sort of modulation going between the two or whatever. Sure. Like that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it's and super so, cool. um, uh, so that kind of happened by accident. And, uh, um, so when people say you run two amps, that stereo, I said, well, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Kind of is. It is at times. Yeah. At like t- when yeah. I put the expression pedal down or something. You yeah, know. then you're getting this. Yeah, yeah, when the delay's really up. Mm-hmm. But you do it because you love the sound of two amps. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So two Kempers. Yeah. Yeah. So the the Park and the and the Supery. Yeah, the um, Supery for now. Yeah. And then you've but you've been, um, I mean, you use you've used the Park with a JMP. You've used in real life. Yeah. So for different gigs, you're switching it up. You're even yeah. using the the That's So James Duke profile, yes. which you were liking a lot with with the yeah, Park, with right? With the Park. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, yeah. That was a full kind of sounding, uh, sort of more beefy thing. Yeah, the the sound that that works really well with the park because that's a little bit brighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is bright. Yeah, the way the way you have it set up too. Yeah, uh, especially to take pedals. Uh huh. It's a fairly bright, um, martially thing not too clean yeah not too clean but clean enough yeah and when you push some pedals into it, you get some breakup from exactly from the yeah. amp and yeah. some breakup from the pedals mm-hmm. and and it forms that sound yeah so i love that that uh, that's so james do uh profile's good i mean i wasn't using any of the effects um yeah you're using your board pretty much primarily yeah. into the mm-hmm. into the yeah just so you're you're back and forth from amp to kemper amp yeah. to kemper you know yeah. And that's one thing is we're really trying to, we're, we're, we've been dialing in your effects yes. and, um, uh, we're, we've got more to do there, yeah. of course, but we're trying to really get a lot of your sounds from your board onto there. Cause we've done profiles with your, over, some of your overdrive pedals yeah. and, you know, as you would use them with different stuff. Yes. Um, but that's really the goal to make stuff that you would use, right? Yeah. That sounds like it your is. rig. You know, I, um, and that's so interesting to me because um, 
the, the, uh, if I can say this, like I, I wouldn't think anyone would be interested, like because <laughs> there's so much stuff. People sound amazing, like with their yeah. big skies or or whatever. Sure. You know, it is they sound amazing, but then you're saying no, this sounds really different. Like people are going to be really interested in this, yeah. and I'm like. Oh really? That's yeah. that's cool. So like, yeah, I'm excited to dive into that a yeah. bit more. Like we've done some delays and reverbs, and um, and what have you. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing around with uh, like even some of the drives and what have you and the modulation stuff. I think we're gonna actually this is this might be a good thing to to ask the audience is um, if we were when we do the performance packs like yeah. what songs are you interested in yeah right so right. like things like did you feel the matters tremble yeah. or my glorious i think it's yeah. a no-brainer right um now bearing in mind that a song like uh my soul sings might only end up with two buttons out of five because <laughs> it's a, you know right, right. big delay clean sure big delay massive right right <laughs> overdrive <laughs> you know but um I think that's the thing that we haven't had access to before, which is like, um, you know, like people really loved uh, on, on the James Duke stuff. People really loved the delays and stuff he was putting on there. Yeah. And I mean, that is something that we haven't really had access to give people before, which is here's someone's settings. We can get an amp, right? We could get an amp and, and look at their settings. Like I have a Marshall Silver Jubilee and someone sent me, here's Joe Bonamassa settings, you know, profile these, right? Well, like you were saying, you still have to play like Joe Bonamassa, yeah. right? To get that yeah. sound. Um, great example. I just, we, I put some chorus. The other day I had my friend Desi Cern over here who's in some of the demo videos and he plays. And if people watch the channel, they know on the basement uh, demo video, we did some Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Some Nirvana tell, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Well, the lead guitar part in there has chorus and fuzz. Mm. He played that guitar part and sounded like Nirvana. He instantly went into an Eric Johnson run. It sounded like Eric Johnson. Mm. Fuzz and chorus. They both use fuzz and chorus. But it was what he was playing, how he was playing it. He Interesting. Had this, I mean, yeah. it, it was. I couldn't believe... The two sound, you know, one was like, this is chorusy, grungy. Yeah. But then just with a change of a part, he started doing this pentatonic little yeah. run, and it was instant, like Eric Johnson esque tone. Now, maybe it didn't nail the tone exactly that Eric uses. Yeah. But it was instantly that sound. Yes. You know, and but now we have the ability to go, a guy like James or a guy like you who is doing doing work with artists with studio work uh, just making records that we hear and really using the delay, almost playing the delay or the sound in a musical way, like an instrument where it's thought about, yeah. you know, it's not just a little bit of delay. So it sounds, you know, nice mm. or a little bit of reverb. So it sounds like it's in a space. It's delay can be part of the sound. Yeah. And now we kind of have the ability with the helix or the ax or Kemper to sort of let people try out that whole sound as yeah. though I could walk up and just plug into your rig and, mm. And hear that sound, and it, it can be hugely inspiring to the way you play or the way yeah. you know you watch a part come together. You know, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like the 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 sonic nature of the thing can actually inspire a song. You know, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, which is kind of, but a, a great song, you'll be able to play on an acoustic guitar or a piano. Yeah, as right. well. That's true. Does that makes sense. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like. Whatever works is yeah. uh, is is what I'm after. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know what profiles I'm probably most excited about? I love the park. Don't get me wrong, mm. but that 64 Vox sounds yeah. so it sounds yeah. so good. Yeah. Now I've profiled Voxes before. Yeah. And I know you've played your 90s Vox out a bunch, yeah. and you love that thing. I, love and it. I absolutely and love it. My main uh, profiles that I play all the time are of a AC30 same era. Yeah. Um, one that I profiled a long time ago is a Tone Junkie Ace. 30 pack and um i've i mean that was my amp for a long time and those those 90s eras voxes are i think regarded as some of the best better sounding stuff mm. not the best sounding stuff they put out um you know unless you really go get an old one or something a really old one yeah but they sound tremendous but this th that vintage vox mm. has something that i haven't heard before yeah. And I've always said, I've said it on the podcast and I, I said it to you one time, sometimes I feel like the boutique amps that are quote unquote voxy, mm. they all almost sound more alike 
than they yeah. sound to a real vintage Vox. And yes. Because it has a certain cleanliness to it. Yeah. And yet it's... That's what I mean by generic. You know, yeah. it kind of things sound the same. You know, yeah. I, I have to say that the matchless stuff sounds fantastic. Sure, like, sure. I, love, I do love... Yeah, there's a ton of great yeah. sounding amps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's right. But, you know, when you... Um, and I don't really know what it is. Like my might, might even be down to components, like right. magnets and yeah, and they're old now. Yeah, and who knows? So, uh, but that's that's what I mean. And there aren't many amps that you plug into immediately, and you think, oh, you know, you're always yeah. trying to make it work. Yeah, does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Like when you when you plug in, and you don't have to make it work. Like that's right. the that's the sign for me. And. Uh, so something that I learned, um, and maybe this is just my own sort of flavor, but uh, when I was working with Chuck's Wiki was, and we started to use the attenuators like the Marshall, uh, uh, whatever that called, that's called, you know, the, yeah, I forget the, the attenuator, the, yeah, and, then, yeah. and then the uh, the hot plates and things like mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. just to take the the volume down. I ended up using them all the time, right? Um, and I found that I preferred. The sound of a, uh, I preferred the sound of that to a master volume, hmm. and what I was re- re- realized was when I sort of talked to a few people that know, um, I don't really know the technical side of this, but sure. you know you're running an output transformer at its sort of max width mm-hmm. and height, you know, um, whereas with a master volume you're kind of making that go yeah. down, and I. So that's why I've got so many amps without master volumes. Yeah. And I would just use an attenuator. Right. Um, to put between the amp and the speaker because I preferred that sound with fuzzes. So, um, uh, you, you know, preferred and, and the with wider. pedals. Yeah. yeah I yeah. preferred the wider yeah. thing with no master volume. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just big, it had more headroom. Yeah. You know, sure. And so they, they tend to work better with pedals for me. Yeah. Which is really interesting because like we're always like trying to make sure things aren't too loud. So you've got your master volume on there. Sure. And then putting all this stuff in front of them. Um and sometimes wondering why, you know, oh that sounds great, but it's just missing something. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so um my understanding is most masters come post phase inverter. So what you're doing is going to preamp into the phase inverter, and then you're bringing the signal down before you get to the power amp, which is great if you want to play something like a Mesa Boogie, where, like like a dual rectifier, where you get all the gain out of the preamp, mm. and then you're really just looking for the power amp to get your volume up. But when you go to a vintage circuit, like a Vox or something, you're looking for that power amp to really saturate and be part of the sound. And that's where, you know... Uh, now then there I, I've seen some of these new hybrid masters and yeah, I've seen the, the variable that, the, the Delana uh-huh. hybrid master on the third power stuff is awesome yeah and I, and I said to her the first time I kind of listened to one like a citizen gain yeah, yeah, yeah. amp or something and, and you know I said I've been looking for that for 30 years <laughs> <laughs> seriously because it didn't change like it's not um it's not uh, changing the gain of the uh, input tubes, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not power scaling. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's kind of doing different stuff. Something else. Yeah, yeah. She's one of the she's one of the few people out there who I think is still really engineering amps, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. The market's pretty saturated with designs that are basically modified circuits. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's not... I think there's a place for that. Yeah. But for an industry... I, I guess it's what you expect for an industry that the technology is 60, 70 years old at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it seems like there are a lot of companies who are pretty much just have a product line of pretty much just modified circuit you know what i mean yeah. like and and good components and there's a there's a place in the market for that but there's very few people who I, who still get patents yeah. you know who have patentable yeah. stuff who are releasing like unique circuits yeah 
you know, that aren't just like, well, here's a 63 Vox, but we increase the negative feedback, put a Mercury Magnus Transformer, and use Sprog caps. It's like, well, that's great, but, you know, it's, it's been done a bit. You know what yeah. I mean? It's been, it's, it's been done, you yeah. know? Yeah. You know, I mean, saying that, you saw I had a basement clone upstairs that I yeah. thought was brilliant, so. Yeah, it's um, awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I've not tried any yet, but the... I hear the Benson amps are amazing. They are really good. As well. They are really, really, really good. Yeah. They're really good. He's taking kind of like, he he knows a lot about the circuits of like Princeton's AC15 Supro stuff. And so he's not like making like, here's a box AC15, but I modified it. He's kind of taking his knowledge of all of these vintage lower powered amps that he knows and then building a circuit kind of using, you know, different, different things from different circuits. I don't even know that he's really lifting different pieces, yeah. but just as he's seen the way different amps are built and what, what, what Chris Benson ends up making is an amp that you play and it's almost like this could have existed. Mm. Like this could have been a design that came out in 65 and we could, and and then people could be cloning this today. Like it yeah. could have been alongside the Princeton or Deluxe or the AC15. Yeah. And it's that type of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, really great feeling and sounding stuff. And made made right here, small uh, small company. Yeah. Uh, just a couple guys in that shop, and they they really doing great stuff. Yeah. You know who's really into that stuff? Um, Michael Pope. It, yeah, 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 yeah. He loves that stuff. I mean, he says since he played a Benson amp. He hasn't played another amp. Hmm. Like plugged into it, changed everything. Yeah. So a lot of the tones that people <laughs> go after, right, and yeah. are trying to copy on the Benson stuff, yeah. um, are are is is his amp. Yeah. And I believe he plays a a Chimera thirty, and it's a it's just one. You know, they only make a couple amps. But yeah. It's a, just a great, great sounding. Yeah, amp. that's really cool. Yeah. And, you know, I, I I was talking with. Jerry McPherson once mm -hmm. and um, we were talking about favorite amps and what have you and um, we kind of came to the conclusion that more than half of the sound comes from the cabinet yeah, well yes <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, and so maybe that's why I like the park so much right is that it's got a really thin yeah uh Cab, vintage cabinet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean the speakers are they're old g12ms mm -hmm. and they are as old as the amp you know yeah, so it's like yeah. there, there's a thing there obviously yeah. but they're plenty worn in yeah you, you play that amp a ton yeah yeah but you know the um you know 4 by 12 cabinet has a different sound the uh the the mesa boogie that or the 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 dual rectifier thing that the tremor verb that, that i have has a certain sound mm -hmm. you know whereas it, it's got the sort of more vintage 30s in it but it's got real heavy open back cap they all sound different yeah and unique and um you know it surprises me sometimes when um we'll, we'll like put one cabinet into a iso booth and then change the amps on the front and sometimes i'm wondering like but that doesn't sound any different <laughs> well i think the idea i mean that the speaker is and this you're right this is underappreciated it's the last thing before you hear the sound. Yeah. So it's it's doesn't what it whatever it's gonna do to the sound, it's gonna do. Yeah. You know, if it's gonna roll off the top end, it's gonna roll off the top end. There's nothing after it to really add top end. Yeah. A microphone, maybe. But most of the mics we have are not that 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 are popular. Yeah. They're not so they don't they don't color it so much that it yeah. makes it, you know, it's trying to pick up what's there. And so, yeah, I mean you Take a Vox AC30 with old blues in it. Mm. Sounds great. Switch it out and put it a vintage 30. You'll be like, that's not this, that's not, mm. that's a totally different that's right. thing. It sounds nothing alike, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what's cool. I don't know if you've heard about this. The new thing that Kemper just announced is their Kemper cabs mm. and something called Kemper Cone. They're having Celestian make them a speaker, a transparent speaker. And what they're building in into the Kemper is an algorithm that when you defeat the cab part of the profile, like I, you and me are still going to make profiles with a cab mm -hmm. and mics and everything, but you'll now have the option to turn that cab off. And when you do, it'll activate Kemper Cone. And Kemper Cone is an algorithm that tells that 
that flat, transparent speaker how to sound like a blue or how to sound like a gold, how to sound like a G12M, how to sound like this and that, mm. so that you can feed your profile into this algorithm that puts it through that filter and then comes out that speaker. And it's supposed to be speaker modeling, basically, where they're using a flat speaker and then creating a speaker modeling algorithm to go between, but it runs in the Kemper. So you... so. That and, and that'll be built into all Kempers, I mean, yeah. really soon. Line 6 has done a similar thing, but that's the idea. And the idea there, too, is the Kemper and the Helix and everything, they're giving you a mic'd up sound. Yeah. How do you get the amp in the room sound? That's right. uh, Which is a very cool, because you're right, the speakers make a huge difference. Yeah. Microphones make a difference. Preamps make a big yeah. difference, you yeah. know? Yeah, I'll tell you, those right. APIs sound a lot more aggressive than a Neve preamp, yeah. you know? They just sound... A little more charged up, yes. and uh, if you haven't heard that difference, mm. then it can make it a little worrisome to go like, "Wait, what have I been playing through? What what would it sound like with this or yeah. with that?" So, um, you've used the Kemper's Christmas tour, everything. You're using real amp still on a lot of the gigs, mm -hmm. on most of the gigs. Um, uh, when are we going to get you converted to try some direct profiles? with the cab on stage because that's where i think there re you really cannot discern a difference like really even in the little it's like is that different it, it, it is that because there's little we pick up on little differences that we notice mm. with the kemper you know what i mean and that's where the refining process is useful it gets it really close you know what i mean that yeah the, we've noticed it gets 85 percent, 90 the way there and then refining really brings it together yeah really brings it right up to it but um, I wonder if you yeah. if you wouldn't I some mean, powered Kempers get yeah. that feel on stage and then still be able to have the consistency of the amplifier going out to the front of house. Yeah, you know. So uh, I mean, I, I I guess the thing is, when can we try it? <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, we got to make that's one of the, one of the things you're saying about the speakers. That's why we're doing the IRs as part of the yeah, uh, the Stu right. G the Stu yeah. G collection. Yeah, and because you because the park is great. The speakers are also great. Yeah. The 64 Vox is great. Those original blues are also great. Yes. Uh, you know, all of it. The JMP, yeah. you've got 20 watt greenbacks in mm -hmm. that 412 cab. That's all stuff that's part of the sound that's going to uh, go really well on the Helix stuff, mm. uh, just in an IR pack everywhere. Yeah. Uh, that was something you, we were talking about earlier with like, like a Boss expander, even. Yeah. You know, people can now take um, their amp, their cab, put the Boss expander unit or whatever they call it in the middle have the signal go through to power the cab on stage and then run an IR, you know, way out, yeah. you know, out at the front of house. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible, isn't it? What, what you can do now. It's super incredible. It yeah. really is. <laughs> Sound like my granddad. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a boy. <laughs> when I was a boy, we had to turn amps up real loud to get yeah. them to sound good <laughs> and put them uh, under, a, under a duvet and a, <laughs> put them in a bed. And that's how we sounded like Boston. Right? <laughs> well, this has been fun. Thank you. I think this has been uh, a useful conversation. That's I think good. people get a lot out of it. Well, thanks for having me. And, what, do, uh, what, do want, what do people want to know before we go here? Favorite delirious song to play ever? Um, that would have to be Investigate. Mm -hmm. uh, we finished the show with that ever since we kind of wrote that song. Yeah. And uh, so that, it just has great memories. Yeah. Greek theater under the stars playing the Investigate solo and not making a mistake was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It's always good when you don't make a yeah. mistake. Right? <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, when is the uh, so? When's the delirious reunion? No, I won't ask you that. Everybody asks. <laughs> Everyone asks it. Everybody asks. I have the same. You know, I I I would love to do that, and yeah. uh, but it's just kind of like watch this space. We're all doing different things, sure, and sure. Uh, and you know, it may or may not ever happen when the stars align. That's right. Favorite guitar tone you've ever recorded. Like the one that you're like, maybe it's investigate also, but I'll tell you something that I think about a lot. Now, uh, this might not be the favorite one ever, but sure. the end of God's Romance on uh, on Glow mm -hmm. is some of my favorite tones hmm. that I've uh, that I've recorded. What was the gear? It was a Tokai Strat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't mine. Yeah. Like belonged to the studio, <laughs> and um, it was DL four, mm -hmm. 
um, in the hands of Chuck's Wiki, though, which mm. is kind of a different thing. And um, um, I can't remember what app. It might have been my park. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember that. But check that out. That's really... Yeah. And the, the beginning of that, of, of God's Romance, where it's got the fuzz, do 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 Mm-hmm. that's the tone bender uh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. favorite part you've ever written again that's really hard I really love the solo of Miracle Maker mm-hmm. um, and I really love the structure of um, Kingdom of Comfort off the last mm-hmm, album mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Favorite, uh, I asked you favorite pedal of all. Well, what's your favorite? You can only have one pedal, which would be hard. One pedal. What's your desert? You get, okay, desert island rig, one amp, you're going to choose the park. Park, yeah. One guitar, one pedal. You can't pick a tuner. We'll give you a tuner. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be a, a delay pedal. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Delay uh, pedal. Uh, let's say DL4. Then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So what guitar? Um, My Les Paul standards. Yeah. Les Paul, DL4, Park. Yeah. Is that the Stu G sound? Probably. Maybe in my <laughs> Something head. like it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's so funny because the, the, the last sort of nine years or 10 years since we finished, um, since Delirious finished, that hasn't been my right kind of main rig. Yeah, you know, or sound. I've I've kind of um, gone way more towards the sort of um, offset mm-hmm. Fender type sound. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah, yeah. But in my head, I'm still Les Paul. Yeah, you know, you're still Les Paul. Les Paul DL4, DL4 park. with a loud park. Yeah, right. Yeah, playing. Uh, Playing the big, uh, doing the big stadium sound, yeah. the big huge, you know, yeah, that's the sound. That is. That's the sound. Stu, this has been great. Thank you. People can uh, people can look out for. Uh, we're releasing the first the first part of the collection very soon. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. Soon. So I'm excited about it. Yeah. Very excited about it. Yeah, so really appreciate all the help with that, and um, and just looking forward to the future. You know, like we we're, we're not. It's impossible to get everything done all at once mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. going to be a little bit of a uh, yeah. you know l- long tail on, on yeah. releasing different things yeah and it's a collection it's a yeah. collection of of gear and tones and yeah. uh because it's covering it's covering you know so much of what you've done in your career yeah so the first pack is is the park uh-huh. and we're going to have some park jmp sounds in there yeah. because that was the last rig you're using with mm-hmm. delirious yep so um Park and JMP dual profiles, plus the park profiles, yes. uh, directs of the park, um, along with uh, channel one, channel two, yep. all the stuff. We threw some pedals in there on the directs, mm-hmm. or on the um, on the dual ones, uh, that sort of approximate the sound of some of the pedals you know, you're know you using and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, putting in some um, some effects and stuff. And we're going to dial in some performances to cover some classic sort of yeah. delirious tones that are yeah. covered by the, the JMP Park. I'm really excited because I want to challenge people to use an amp that's a little more rocking on a Sunday morning. Because mm. I think it works. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Everybody uses the Vox. Yeah. Let's use a park. I, I think you, know I, I mean? yeah. <laughs> you can always, you know, turn your volume knob down a little yeah, bit, make yeah. it a bit cleaner. Yeah, yeah, but I I think it works and it's going to sound great. And I'm super excited. And I really do think people have asked me this. They say, um, I'm sure they're going to sound great, but um, is Stu giving this the stamp of approval? And oh, yes. Y- you're testing all this stuff out. You're, you're, you're doing it. This first pack especially, this is these are the profiles that you're playing using. live. Yeah. You've been using it. And probably the ones you're going to use the most yeah. because that's your... Certainly on one, one camper, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, those park ones. I mean, mm-hmm. it's... That's not leaving your your rig anytime soon. That's that that one hundred percent correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you know, um, I love uh, answering questions. Like, 
maybe next time if yeah. anyone has any yeah. specific questions we, to us we could do a q a absolutely next time we'll do yeah. uh we'll do i just did a q a we'll put them out on, on instagram we'll do a mm. little question thing we'll come in here we'll answer them yeah and uh that'll be perfect that will be perfect. I'm sure people are going to have people are going to have all sorts of questions once these come out. What's your favorite profile? What did you yeah. use on this song? Yeah. What did you what what's I love this delay. What are you using in the H9? Mm. What are you using? I mean, we could talk forever yeah. about gear for sure. Yeah. It never ends. That'd be superb. Let's do it again. All right. I've been HW. You've been Stu G. <laughs> HW. Stu G. Out. <laughs>